Hello, welcome to this lesson on dimensional analysis. The question of the day is how many quarters would you need to make $5.50? Okay, so really what's happening here is that you're doing a unit conversion. You are converting dollars into quarters, five and a half dollars, really. So what you would do is remember the conversion factor that one dollar is equal to four quarters or that one quarter of a dollar is equal to a quarter. <laughs> That's why it's called a quarter. <laughs> so if we're starting with $5.5 and we multiply that by the four quarters it takes to make a dollar, we wind up with 22 quarters being equivalent to five and a half dollars. So really what's happening here is that you are using a conversion factor. Like I said, a conversion factor is just two units or two quantities rather that are equal to each other, but they have different units representing them. Typically we're gonna represent it as a ratio or a fraction. So here our conversion factor is highlighted in pink. We have four quarters is equal to $1. They represent the same amount of money. They're just represented by different units, quarters and dollars. Now here are some examples of other conversion factors. Obviously the four quarters in a dollar, one year is equal to 365 days, 36 inches is equal to three feet. From the metric system lesson, you know that there's a thousand milliliters per liter. And then this one was kind of fun. There, uh, in order to have three Oreos, you would have 34 grams of Oreos. Those are equivalent values. And then 500 sheets of paper makes a ream. Now, looking more so into the conversion factors um, and kind of explaining it, because I know a lot of people, it kind of like trips you up. Uh, so if we're looking at the quarters right here, they represent the same amount of money, just using a different unit to describe the amount of money. Same thing with one year and 365 days. They represent the same amount of time, but in different units. And then finally, 36 inches and three feet represent the same length or the same distance but again, in different units. That is what makes them conversion factors. They are equivalent to each other. Dimensional analysis is a process or a way to analyze and solve problems. And what we're gonna do is use the units of a measurement in order to help us solve that problem. Really what that means is that we're just converting units from one unit to another, typically by multiplying by conversion factors. If you have taken, I think pre-algebra is where you learn this, if you do something to one side of the equation, you have to do the exact same thing to the other side of an equation if they're set equal to each other. And that's kind of what's happening here is that we are doing the same thing to both sides because our two units or two measurements or two quantities are equal to each other. Like right here, we have 12 inches and one foot. Those are equivalent values. They represent the same distance. So if we multiply the top of an equation and the bottom of an equation by two values that are equivalent to each other, thinking like a math-brained person, this would be exactly the same thing as multiplying by one over one or two over two or 500 over 500. Because they're equivalent values, we're allowed to do it and it doesn't actually change anything except for the unit, which is what we're going for. So I have an example to kind of walk us through. Let's assume that you're 15 and a half years old. And the question is, how many seconds old are you? So we're going to start with our original quantity, but we're going to write it out as a fraction because it's a little bit easier to visualize what's going on. So we're going to take that 15.5 years and we're going to put it over one because you know from math class that any value and you take it, you put it over one, you've just turned it into a fraction without really changing the number at all. The second thing we're gonna do is choose the conversion factors that are gonna take us from what we have, which is years, to what we need, which is seconds. There are a lot of conversion factors that revolve around time. There's one week and seven days, like we said earlier, a year and 365 days. One day is 24 hours. There's 60 seconds in a minute. We can go on and on and on. But the strategy is to choose the shortest path to get from what we have to what we need. And we're gonna use the units to kind of guide us so that we get to where we need to go. So what we're gonna do is align our units diagonally so that we have one on the top and one on the bottom, just like in math class where you have, you know, an X on the top and an X on the bottom of a fraction, you can cancel them out because it's the same thing as X divided by X, which is really just one. Um, that's kind of what we wanna do here. So we're gonna do that same thing with our units. 
what we did was we took our 15 and a half years and put it over one. That was step one, get our, our given value as a fraction. And then we're going to multiply by conversion factors, which we want our units to align. So the idea is that we're going to cancel out all of the units until we get down to just seconds, which is what we need. Now, if we put one on the top and one on the bottom, the years cancels with years. And at this point, all we are left with is days. Days is not what we want in the end. We want to get down to seconds, which is why we need to keep going until we get to seconds. Now, this whole thing with the line and the, the parallel lines running, this is something that like we just do. You could also do this by just multiplying with a little x. That works just fine as well, but I think most often you'll see it in this kind of linear chopped up format. They're just fractions and we've, we're using these bars to kind of separate them. So don't let that scare you. Uh, I know it looks scary because it's nothing like <laughs> math class, but that's just how we do it. Now, this note on the bottom, make sure your CV conversion factor is flipped the right way. My thing with dimensional analysis that I don't like about dimensional analysis takes me back to uh, my seventh or eighth grade experience with this is that I would get the correct conversion factor, but I would put it into my, my lineup upside down. And it's very important that you put it in right side up because otherwise you're going to get the wrong unit at the end. Um, well, actually, you'll, you'll wind up with the inverse. It'll be flipped over. If we have the years on the top and years on the bottom, that's how you know that you've done it right, is that one of your units is top, one is bottom, and then you can cancel them. The idea is by the end, you should be able to cancel all of the units except for the one that you're looking for. So in this case, all of these values, if you look just top and bottom, they are equivalent. 15 years over, or 15.5 years over one was the given information. Now this is a conversion factor. 365 days is equivalent to one year. 24 hours is equivalent to one day. 60 minutes is equivalent to one hour and 60 seconds is equivalent to one minute. If you need to hear that again, back it up. All of those are considered conversion factors. So in this case, we have used four conversion factors to convert 15.5 years into seconds. Another thing, years cancels with years, one on the top, one on the bottom. Days cancels with days, one on the top, one on the bottom. Hours cancels with hours, one on the top, one on the bottom. And then we have minutes canceling with minutes. But seconds does not get canceled because that's the unit that we want to keep. That's the one that we want to end on. So we're going to keep that. And that's how we know that we've made it to the end. So the final thing is to actually do the math now that we've set it up and we know that we've set it up correctly. What we're going to do is because we're just multiplying fractions, we're going to multiply everything across the top, multiply everything across the bottom, and then divide those two values. It should always just be one value divided by one other value, nothing crazy. Now, this can get to be very big or very small numbers. It's important to kind of have an expectation of where you're going, whether this number is going to be very big or very small. 15 and a half years, you know, is a lot of seconds. So if you get a very tiny number of seconds, your answer might be flipped upside down. So take a look at that. Um, so in this case, which does happen a lot with dimensional analysis problems, is that your denominator will just be 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 times 1, which we love because you don't have to punch that in a calculator. It'll save you some time. But across the top, we have this very crazy multiplication problem. It is this 15.5 times this 365 times the 24 times the 60 times the second 60, which I've written down here across the bottom. Now, this gets us a ridiculously large number, which is 488,808,000 seconds. It's a gigantic number. It is. <laughs> should probably be written in scientific notation. If we're considering significant figures, um, the conversion factors typically are not considered when we are looking at the number of significant figures. So truthfully, the 15.5 is the value that we're working with. It, it was given to us as a fraction. I don't know if you remember. Um, so we worked with 15.5. If we take that, um, our final answer should really just have three significant figures. So I would do 4.88 times 10 to the ninth. That would be my answer. Um, but to, just to have it typed out, it would be this 488,808,000 seconds, which of course is not like the most accurate answer because it requires you to be exactly 15.5 years old, not a second older or a second younger, but also, um, 
probably not that important because it equates to four days um, or 3.75 days. A, a year is actually 365.25 days. Every four years, they add up to a whole day. And that's why we have leap day uh, every four years on leap year. Which if, if you were considering that, that also changes your answer a little bit. You have to be exactly 15.5 years old. Like I said, not a second younger or older. Um, so the 4.88 million or 4.88 times 10 to the ninth actually kind of encompasses that little margin of error because um, we only have three significant figures, but it's such a large number that we know that there are other numbers there, but they don't really change the value, right? If this were 488,200,000 seconds, it doesn't make that much of a difference when we're just talking about three significant figures, right? Um, so that's part of the reason why we like significant figures is that it takes like super crazy exact giant numbers and can just like kind of ballpark them and say it's 488 million. And that's all we really need to know. Um, the exact number of seconds, you would have to have a better diagnosis of exactly how many years old you were. The 15.5 only has three sig figs. So going into that, we know that our answer can't be more precise than the 15.5. So that's another reason why the answer should be in scientific no notation in this case, which I find to be true for many dimensional analysis problems. Um, but again, just to point out, the conversion factors themselves are not considered when we're talking about significant figures. So the 365 days has three sig figs, 24 hours has two, but 60 minutes and 60 seconds only has one. Those are not considered, they're considered constant values. I think they're called, I don't remember. When it's conversion factors, um, we consider them to have an infinite number of significant figures behind them. So we don't even talk about them. Um, so again, your answer is gonna be based on that 15.5. All right. Um, at some point, there will be a practice video going over a few dimensional analysis problems. If you need more help, of course, feel free to rewatch the video. Leave any questions you have in the comment section below this video. Subscribe so you don't miss the next lesson, and I'll see you there. Bye.